Alright guys, we'll be talking about Michel Rolle today. He was born in 1652 and died in 1719, and he is responsible for Rolle's theorem. So, about his early life, Rolle was born in Ambert Basse Averne in France, April 21st, 1662. He was of the lower middle class, son of a shopkeeper, and with only an elementary education. It is a real surprise how he was able to accomplish what he did and provide a legacy as a great mathematician with this minimal education. As a young adult, he married early and in turn struggled to support his family as he worked as a transcriber for notaries and attorneys, earning only minimal wages. Despite his financial issues and lack of proper or edu complete education, Rowe was no doubt a born mathematician and studied algebra and Diophantine analysis, which is number theory that has roots in all types of math, in his own free time. Eventually, he moved away from his home in Ambert to live in Paris, presumably to advance his career in 1675. So... Uh, in the start of his career, he caught his big break in 1682 when he published a solution to a difficult and unsolved Diophantine analysis problem. From this achievement spawned public recognition, which led to patronage under Minister Louvois, French Secretary of State for War, as well as a short-lived position as Ministry of War. More importantly, it also landed him a job as an elementary mathematics teacher, which finally formally introduced him as an actual mathematician. Three years later, in 1685, he joined Académie des Sciences, a relatively new learned society which would soon become the forefront to many scientific breakthroughs, although he was in an entry-level position for which he did not receive any salary. He didn't receive any salary until 1699 when he was promoted to the title Pensionnaire Geometre, not really sure how to pronounce that, which was a distinguished post as only 20 of the 70 members at the time were paid. He remained in the academy until he died from apoplexy, unconsciousness or incapacity resulting from a cerebral hemorrhage or stroke in 1719. Although Rolle mainly studied in algebra and Diophantine analysis, he is most known for his work Traite de Algebra? I can only say it in a Spanish accent. A book on the algebra of equations, published in 1960. Within the book, Rolle established the, no the notation for the nth root of a polynomial and essentially created Rolle's theorem with the proof of the polynomial version of his theorem. Rolle's theorem states, if a real-valued function f is continuous on a proper closed interval, a to b, differentiable on the open interval, a to b, and f of a is equal to f of b, then there exists at least one c in the open interval a, b, such that f prime c is equal to zero. This theorem serves many functions in calculus, for example, providing the basis for the proof of Taylor's theorem. Aside from his uh, Rolle's theorem, his most known accomplishment, Rolle also helped advance the currently accepted size order for negative numbers. Descartes, for example, another mathematician at the time, viewed negative 2 as a smaller value than negative 5. Which is obvious to us, but it makes you wonder about back then, right? Um, here is the pictures of his book, the Trader Algebra, and the school he went to, the Academy, the French Academy of Sciences. So here's Rolle's theorem more in depth. I'm just going to restate it. Let f be a function that satisfies the following hypothesis: f is continuous on the closed interval a to b, f is differentiable on the open interval a b and f of a is equal to f of b. Then there's a number c in a, b such that f prime c is equal to zero. So here we go with the proof. It's going to be long. According to the theorem, if there's a function f where f of a is equal to f of b, then there exists a point c in interval a, b such that the derivative of function f is zero. f prime c equals zero. If f of a is equal to f of b, then f requires a maximum or minimum at point c that lies somewhere within, somewhere within the interval a, b. From this, we can say that f changes either from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing at point c. Thus, the derivative at c must be equal to zero. Assuming f is continuous on a, b, and according to the extreme value theorem, if f is continuous at a closed interval a, b, then f attains an absolute max value or min value, say f of c, at some point c in the interval a, b. The function f attains both its max and min values in a, b. If these values are both attained at the endpoints of a, b, then f is constant on a, b, and so the derivative of f must be zero at every point in a, b. Now assume the maximum value is obtained at an interior point C in AB. For this purpose, we will examine left and right hand limits. Let H be a small real number where H is greater than zero, such that C plus H belongs to the interval AB. Since F reaches its maximum point at C, the value of F of C plus H must be smaller or equal to F of C. Therefore, for every H is greater than zero, F of C plus H minus F of C over H is less than or equal to zero. Hence, f prime c on the right-hand side is equal to limit as h approaches 0 on the right-hand side of f of c plus h minus f of c over h. 
divided, or I'm sorry, is less than or equal to zero. In the same way h is less than zero, the value of f of c plus h is greater than or equal to f of c. So f of c plus h minus f of c over h is greater than or equal to zero. Hence f prime c to the left-hand limit is equal to limit as h approaches zero from the left-hand side of f of c plus h minus f of c over h is greater than or equal to zero where the limits exist by assumption, meaning they may be minus infinity or positive infinity, respectively. Since the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit both agree, they both may equal zero, the derivative at c must be zero. f prime c is equal to zero. There you go, Rolls theorem. So here's some fun facts about him, just to uh, brighten up his otherwise boring story. <laughs> Rolls was ironically one of calculus's most vocal critics and continuously attempted to prove it was based on unsound reasoning and flawed results. To demonstrate in a criticism of infinitesimal calculus, Roll presented a series of papers at the French Academy, claiming that the methods of infinitesimal calculus led to errors. It was later discovered that Roll had simply misinterpreted the problems, and that there actually was no error. Eventually, Roll changed his mind regarding his stance towards calculus, but it is extremely ironic that he was ever opposed to it, as he is credited with developing an essential aspect found in calculus proofs. Roll's theorem. The theorem knowledge or concept of Roll's theorem was actually known before Roll in the 12th century by Indian mathematician B2, <laughs> B the second, I don't know, whatever you want to call him, and the theorem itself was named after Roll by Italian mathematician Giusto Bellavitis in 1846. Interestingly enough, Roll developed a theorem named after him without the use of cal differential calculus because at the time he was of the opinion that calculus was flawed. Remember, he was one of calculus's greatest critics. Um, one more cool thing, doesn't have anything to do with anything, but Roll, born on April 21st, 1652, shares the same birthday as me. Well, I was born in 1999, but you guys get it. And then finally, the review question. I pose to you from section 3, number 17. Can Roll's theorem be applied in this situation, given the equation f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 7 on the interval 0 to 4? And that's all, guys. Thank you for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. And, um, yeah, thank you.